Hello everyone, it's Lau and it's time to talk about episode 32 from Delicious Party Precure, which was a pleasant surprise. This was a very fun episode between Men Men and Iran Iran. It was super cute and I enjoyed it a lot. This episode also brought us some interesting trivia about the recipes that we didn't know before. And even though this was a very light-hearted episode with Kumamon, a very popular Japanese mascot, doing a little participation, it also brought some interesting tidbits that I think are gonna play out an important role later on in the series, especially towards Amane's character. So the first thing I'm gonna say is that I'm happy that we have this because I feel like for the majority of Delicious, Men Men has been the most shafted character from the main cast. And it's interesting that we see a little bit more on his relationship with Dan because it's clear the relationship, the relationship between Yui and Kome Kome, for example, is clear as day. I feel like Kon Kone and Pam Pam had more opportunities to showcase their relationships to, throughout the season and throughout the episodes. And Men Men was always in the shadows a little bit, so seeing him appear more is interesting. And also, he kind of gave us a little bit more on an insight of an energy fairy, of what an energy fairy does. Because in this episode, we have an udon recipe that disappeared and all the other noodles recipes were worried about it. And because of that, they went after Men Men. And Men Men said, I am the energy fairy of noodles. And so every time a noodle recipe has some trouble, they come to me. This is something that we did not know before. The we didn't really know that the energy fairies, they represent some sort of food. I mean, this we knew, but this food they represent, the SCPPs that are related to this food, go for them for guidance, for help. And I feel like this is an interesting thing, even though it's a little weird because everything that the energy fairies have done in the season has been together with the girls and everything they've done with the girls, we have seen, we have watched because the show has shown us. And it feels a little weird and a little bit disconnected to what we've seen throughout the show so far. And another thing that I found very weird was the fact that the mood of the recipes influenced the food, like, entirely. And I found that a little weird because so far we haven't seen recipes having agency. They are just either very happy because people are enjoying food or they are suffering because the Bundaru gang is stealing them. That's it. The only DCPP that we've seen having some sort of personality is the Parfait DCPP because it is considered a special one. And it's, it's not the same thing as an energy fairy, but it's akin to the energy fairies. Uh, it's kind of like the energy fairy from Cure Finale. And so... Seeing the recipes get a lot of agency and a lot of attitude in this episode and this attitude reflect on the way the food tastes is very weird. But at the same time, I found that I found it was interesting that uh, even though the, the taste of the noodles were different because they felt soggy, they were still good. They, 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 they were not bad or spoiled like when the Bandru gang does this attack. So, yeah, I found it a little strange, but it's okay. Now, let's get to another thing that I found very interesting about this episode, which is Amane. So far in the Delicious Party uh, cast from the four main girls, I think that the three ones, they have been dealt with very nicely at the start of the show. We have episodes from 1 to 10 for the team together and um, for the team to join forces and everything. So we get to learn a lot about Yui, Kokone, and Dan. So I feel like as characters, they are kind of resolved. They've had dramas throughout the show and they resolve those dramas in their own episodes. And then we have Amani. She has a big drama, but it doesn't feel like it's resolved yet, 
We've seen that appearing a couple of times throughout the show, and we saw that today again. When they get to uh, Adam's family restaurant, Amane is hesitant to enter because she does not want to be in that place because Dan used to be a big target from when she was Gentlu. And she attacked Gentlu, she attacked uh, the recipes uh, from the noodles recipes as well at, when she was Gentlu. So that for her is still something that she has to deal with. She has guilt over what she did in the past. And even though she forgave herself and became your finale, she still has to deal with those, th with the things that she did with her actions until today because, you know, they are living with her. They are still inside her. And I really liked how Ran was able to notice that and get her hands and come on Amane and join, uh, bring Amane together with them so they could join a good time together. That was a very sweet moment. I really enjoyed it. And we have Kumamon also bringing a little bit more of attitude. And then we have the girls searching for the Udon recipe. Uh, I, I found it very weird that they put Kokone and Pom Pom taking care of the recipes. Like that is so something that Kokone would not be able to deal. <laughs> but um, Yui was the one who was searching for everything together with Men Men. And we could see Men Men using a, a different power that he also has. Uh, it's interesting if we think about it because Men Men has, ha has shown Case the ability of using like this fire breath in past episodes and now he has this um, fortune telling power as well. And uh, he used it and they were able to discover it was related to Kumamon. I liked how they, like, I, I, I really enjoyed the way they put this guest on this episode like they weren't really able to connect Kumamon to the plot of the show and um, it's interesting to see Man Man using this power in a different way somehow and it also affected Yum Yum's ability during the fighting scene because then they discover where the SPP is, Secret Through arrives and attacks and we have the fighting scene. Before we comment on the fighting scene let's just say they are not ready to tell us what Spirituru is doing. Like, they're keeping it a secret because we have the dialogue between Spirituru and Sigrituru and they did not tell us anything about what Spirituru is doing. All we know is that what Spirituru is doing is working fine. I am so curious. Sigrituru, please tell us, girl. Don't hold back. <laughs> but then we have the fighting scene and I feel like the, the, the fact that Men Men using his powers uh, brings Yum Yum's power down is a bummer, but it was very interesting that Yum Yum was able to fight nonetheless, even though she was a little weaker at the start of the fight. After that, it was okay for her, and I love that uh, he called her the noodle entertainer. Was that it? I loved it because she, was, she is able to use the noodle in so many different ways, and if you think about it, from all the girls, Ran is the most connected to her food because she works like closer in her restaurant and she work, her family works closely to bring the best noodle experience. And so I feel like from all the four, she is the one that's, closely, that's closer to the food that she represents. And so her being able to maneuver noodles in fights that way makes a lot of sense for Yum Yum, and I really liked it. You know, the fighting scene was not something wild, something grand, something big, but I really liked it for this aspect of Yum Yum specifically. As I said, Men Men and Dan were missing this moment in Delicious, and they finally had it. Very, very nice. And so the episode ended very nicely, but I am very curious for next week because we are going to have an episode dedicated to Amane. Amane is going to be the center. It's going to be the Halloween episode. We're going to see Mari in a different costume. Baby, bring it on. I cannot wait. And Amane is going to be the center. Again, uh, talking about this relationship uh, between her and her own feelings towards what happened in the past. 
How is she going to deal with that? It seems that she's going to have a hard time, and I cannot wait, actually. I think it's going to be very interesting to see her being able to deal or not deal with her feelings. I feel like it's it can be a clear character arc uh, for them to work with and later on and her character with this giving closure to this character arc. So I really cannot wait. Anyways, this was my view on episode 32 from Delicious Party. What did you think about this episode? Please leave a comment. Let's keep talking in the comment box below. Anyways, babies, just taking this little time to thank the members of the Magical Cinema channel. If you are a member, thank you very, very much for your support. Thank you for believing in Magical Cinema. And if you've watched the channel, thank you so much as well. Thank you so much for watching and until next time. Bye-bye!